Hi everyone, welcome back. Carrying on with some organisation today, having a look at the enzymes involved in digestion. So we're going to be looking at what an enzyme is, what the lock and key hypothesis is, and something called the induced fit hypothesis, and what enzymes are involved in digestion, where they're found, what they break down, and what they break down the substances into. So as always, grab some paper, grab some pens, and follow along with me. Let's start off with looking at the de definition of the word enzyme then. An enzyme is what we call a biological catalyst, which isn't the greatest definition in the world because it's still a bit confusing, so let's break it down a bit more. So when talking about biology or you're learning biology, bio means life. So it's things that are to do with living things. And a catalyst is more of a chemistry term, but it's a substance that speeds up a chemical reaction. If we break down this definition in something a bit more simple, an enzyme is just a substance that speeds up a chemical reaction in living things. In terms of what we care about in digestion, the chemical reaction we're talking about is breaking down large food molecules into smaller ones. Now the idea of catalyst is sometimes hard to get across, especially when we're talking about things we can't see. You can't physically see your body digesting your own food. So, I've got a little experiment that hopefully will um, make things a little bit clearer. So in my chemical reaction, I'm going to be talking about um, a can of Coke going flat. So this one I opened just before I started filming and hopefully you could hear that fizz. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put equal amount of Coke into each glass. See the bubbles? Okay, so in my chemical reaction, I'm saying that my end product is that the Coke has gone flat. Now I could just leave these two cups out for, you know, half an hour to, to you know, half a day for them to go flat naturally, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not a patient woman. I need things to happen now. So what I'm going to do now is introduce a catalyst that's going to speed up the reaction So what you hopefully can see is the one on the right, on my right, it's reacting much faster and much quicker. There's much more bubbles forming, more gases being released, and this one would go flat much faster because of the catalyst. Now, Rennies aren't really a catalyst for Coke, it's not actually a chemical reaction, but it does demonstrate it much nice, uh, very nicely. Before we delve into the beautiful and wonderful world of digestive enzymes, let's have a look at generally what enzymes do, because it can be quite hard to get your head around. So in my diagram, I'm drawing out an enzyme. It's got a special area on it that I'm doing in orange called an active site. And then the red bit is what we call the substrate. Now the substrate is just the substance of the enzymes acting on. So in digestion, your substrate will be your protein molecule or it'll be your sugar molecule. Um, the enzyme itself, <clears throat> can be reused and its shape is always specific so matches what it's breaking down and the bit in orange the active site is just the special term we give for the part of the enzyme that actually physically joins to the substrate in order to break it up now enzymes work in small little steps so what will happen is firstly the enzyme will have to collide with bump into the substrate at the active site so those two will sort of stick together almost like magnets or like putting a lock into a key. What will happen then is the enzyme will then break the bonds of that substance. So if it's lots of sugars all joined together in a carbohydrate, it will break the bonds between those sugars. So you end up with individual little sugar molecules rather than a big long chain of sugar. Um, then afterwards, the broken down substance is re released from the enzyme or removed. And then that enzyme can be used over and over and over again. Enzymes don't just break down products though. Lots of people just tend to think of enzymes and digestion breaking down food. Enzymes can also put molecules together. So you have enzymes for more than just digestion in your body. Most of the chemical reactions are controlled by enzymes. Um, so enzymes are also used, for example, building amino acids into protein or for, um, you know, used in respiration to make that happen at a rate that's worth happening at all. What we're going to have a look at next then is something called the lock and key hypothesis, which talks about how the shape of an enzyme is very, very, very important and matches the shape of a substrate. Okay, let's have a look at the lock and key hypothesis as well as something called the induced fit hypothesis, which is mainly aimed at higher tier. 
In the lock and key hypothesis or the lock and key theory is to do with the shapes of the enzymes and the shapes of the substrates and how they fit ex each other exactly like a lock and the right key should. So in my diagram, the big green blob is our enzyme and I'm drawing a number of substrates as well. If you look at the shape of them as I'm drawing them out before I sort of reveal the answer in a minute, see if you can guess which of the four substances you think are going to fit into that enzyme and you know be sped up broken down by it. Hopefully you got the answer right. The other ones didn't fit because their shape is wrong. If you look at the enzyme, the active site, so the bit that sort of goes in, has a circle and a square shape. So only substance two, so a substrate two, that has the circle and the square shape is going to fit. I mean, substance four might fit in there, but because it's a circle on top and a circle on bottom, it's still not going to work correctly. So if we think of digestion, think of the enzymes being things like protease, and they're only ever going to work on breaking down protein. You wouldn't want an enzyme that breaks down everything. That might sound really efficient. You don't have to make as many, but think of it this way. The cell membranes of all of your cells and lots of parts of your body are made of proteins and lipids. So if you had an enzyme, especially in your digestive system, that could break down any lipid or any protein it came into contact with, you would just digest your own body. And that's a bad thing, ladies and gentlemen. So to get around this, you have one enzyme, one substrate, a lock and a key. Okay, the induced fit hypothesis is slightly different. In this instance, we have an enzyme still and a substrate still, but this time the active site can actually stretch or warp to fit the substrate if the shape is similar enough. The way I like to think about induced fit hypothesis that makes sense to my brain is like a glove. So, you know, in, in these COVID-19 times, we have lots of gloves lying about. So you could try this yourself. If you think of the enzyme, as being the glove and my hand as being the substrate, you can see that they're both human hand shaped, but this is a generic human hand shape and this is my own specific hand that I grew myself. If I put my hand into here, you'll notice that the glove will sort of wrap around and warp from its generic human sausage finger shape to something that more closely matches my hand shape so you can sort of see my knuckles now rather than just the glove. So that's induced fit. It will wrap around and change its shape to match something that is close enough in shape. What we're going to have a look at now is the specific enzymes in digestion, how they work and what those substances are used for. So this will be the last bit. I suggest using colour for this one as well. Last part of our lesson today then is looking at the specific enzymes in digestion. So there are three main ones you need to know. Amylase, lipase, protease. You might have also heard of carbohydrates, but carbohydrates is sort of like an umbrella, a larger term for different um, carbohydrate based enzymes. Amylase is an example of a carbohydrate. So try not to get the two confused. So our first substance is starch. So long chains of sugar, carbohydrates as well. That gets broken down by the enzyme amylase. That breaks the bonds and turns that long starch into lots of little glucose molecules, which are then small enough to diffuse across that villi in the small intestine. Remember those villi are there to make the surface area nice and big for maximizing or absorbing all those beautiful nutrients into your body. Glucose is then gonna diffuse and then that's gonna get used in your body for things like respiration, for example. Protein is made up of lots of different units. This gets broken down by protease, another enzyme. This breaks it into amino acids. Those amino acids then diffuse across the intestinal wall through the villi into those blood capillaries. And then that is taken off to the body and used for growth and repair. Lipids or fats are broken down by their own enzyme called lipase or lipase, you might call it. This breaks the fat into two parts, fatty acid and glycerol. You need to know both of them, unfortunately. Those can then diffuse into the blood and then go off to the body. Fats are often used for insulation, long-term energy stores, and lots of other things as well. Okay, that's all we've got time for today. Next time we get together, we're gonna to be looking at how different temperatures and different pHs, etc., can affect how well enzymes work. Um, for now, in terms of exams, just make sure you know the names of the three enzymes in digestion, 
how enzymes work, so what their active site is, what the substrate is, what the enzyme is in a diagram, be able to label them. Uh, know what the lock and key theory is and the general ideas behind it. If you're higher tier, know what induced fit theory is, and then know the names of the three digestive enzymes, what they break down, what they break it down into, where it happens, and what that substance is used for. Not much to remember there at all. <laughs> so make sure you get really good notes down, do the quiz if you're part of my Google Classroom after this video, and then come back next time for some more work. Uh, I'll see you very soon. Have a good day.